Good evening. Today is Saturday, August 1st, 2020. And this is the first in a series of videos presented by the Oklahoma Federation of Democratic Women's Clubs in commemoration of the centennial birthday of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Our video series is entitled, My Centennial Crush, My Suffragist Hero. Shiro. Throughout the month of August, we will recognize and honor the women whose blood, sweat, and tears secured the right to vote for women who have moved women forward towards full equality. Our program today will highlight the centennial crush of our very important Oklahoma Democratic woman, yours truly, OFDWC State President, Jana Lewis Harkins. Many of you know that I was elected state president in 2019 and am halfway through my first term. Even with the negative impact of COVID, this past year has been memorable and I feel that we have made some strides. My biggest regret is that we were unable to host a state convention this year. However, the board and I are committed to ensuring that our 2021 convention will be over the top. I have also previously served as the OFDWC treasurer. I've been an OFDWC member since 1978 when I joined the Georgia Brown Club at the urging of my grandmother's friend, Freddie Williams. At the time, Freddie was uh, planning on running for the Oklahoma House of Representatives against the incumbent, and I was a young aspiring labor union activist. At that time, I lived in House District 99 in Northeast Oklahoma City, and I guess you could say the rest is history. Like many political activists, I cut my teeth and developed a love of politics as a union activist. Following my retirement and return to Oklahoma, I joined the Metro OFDWC club in Oklahoma City and was elated when the following year, Metro and Georgia Brown members voted to merge the two clubs. In 2007, I was elected the state treasurer for the Oklahoma Democratic Party. However, in October of that year, I survived a major heart attack, which resulted in extensive surgery. Following the traumatic experience, my family and I decided that it would be best for me to resign from all activities that did not enhance my well-being, my health. Over a lifetime of community activism, I have been the recipient of numerous awards and honors. None is more treasured than my induction into the OFDWC Women's Hall of Fame in 2013. My mantra is stronger together and my goal for 2020 is to do all I can to ensure that we win big. Although the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920, this landmark event was neither the beginning nor the end of the story for women and their struggle for the right to vote. Although Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm was born in 1924, four years following the ratification of the 19th Amendment, I have chosen her as my centennial crush. Living up to her mantra, unbought and unbossed, the Congresswoman was crushing it from the moment she entered Democratic Party politics as a young determined woman until she retired from Congress in 1982. 
She was not afraid to stand up to the status quo and speak her truth as she went about her business representing her constituents and advancing the causes of women and persons of color. A recent article in the National Archives chronicles Congresswoman Chisholm's accomplishments in this way. <clears throat> Long before scholars coined the term intersectionality, Chisholm's focus on the correlation between race, gender, and class demonstrated her keen ability to understand the political capital associated with its meaning. She worked towards constructing a coalition among those who had been traditionally kept outside of the political process and demonstrated her commitment to her principles by founding both the Congressional Black Caucus in 1971 and the National Women's Political Caucus in 1972. Her early career as a teacher was the foundation for her accomplishments and the respect she garnered in her key position as a member of Congress's powerful Education and Labor Committee. Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm was the first African-American woman elected to the U.S. Congress representing a district in Brooklyn, New York in 1968. Prior to being elected to Congress, she served in the New York State Assembly from 1964 to 1968. She stood out at both the state and federal levels as a force for civil women's and children's rights. In 1972, the Congresswoman ran for United States president as a Democratic Party candidate, the first woman to do so within a major party. Without sufficient resources and support, her candidacy floundered, garnering only 152 convention delegates. But her fighting spirit did not falter. Chisholm continued in Congress until her retirement, inspiring people, particularly minorities, to frame their own narrative to consider what changes were needed in our country and to recognize their own significance in the democratic process. She challenged voters to abandon the notion that citizen support should only be entrusted to winnable candidates, i.e. white males. She announced her retirement in 1982, leaving Congress to help with the care of her husband who had been injured in an automobile accident. Congresswoman Chisholm was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1993. She was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2015. Congresswoman Chisholm referred to herself as a revolutionary and was an outspoken change agent. She has been the inspiration for many women and minority political activists. Many, like me, find inspiration in her words. My favorite quote is the following from 1968. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Senator Kamala Harris, Democrat, California, honored Congresswoman Chisholm's legacy by announcing her candidacy for president on the same day that the elder did and by using Chisholm's striking yellow and red color scheme for her own campaign logo. Harris would go on to say, like Shirley, I believe that to restore confidence and trust in our institutions and leaders, we need to speak truth. I can see Congresswoman Chisholm's spirit in the words and actions of many of our Oklahoma 2020 candidates. 
Both are incumbents and the brave young woman who has stepped up to run for the very first time. First time Oklahoma candidates, Danielle Lanier and Mari Turner immediately come to mind. I don't doubt that these young go-getters have drug up a few folding chairs from time to time. Danielle is running to unseat the Republican incumbent in Northeast Oklahoma's Congressional District 2. Danielle is a native Oklahoman born in Tahlequah and raised in Hugo and is also a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. She has sworn an oath to protect and defend the Constitution when she answered the call to serve in the United States Navy. And she promises to continue to honor that oath as the next Congresswoman from Oklahoma. Danielle is a wife and mother and believes everyone, everyone should have a voice when it comes to their elected officials. Danielle's priorities include protecting small businesses, improving uh, rural health care, protecting the environment, and improving aging infrastructure. We need to show Danielle some love. Follow her on social media. Share her campaign post. Sign up for contactless campaign activities. Write postcards. Make phone calls. Donate, donate, donate. No amount is too small. A donation to cover a book or two of stamps would be a big help. Mari's plan is to be sworn in on Oklahoma Statehood Day 2020 as the next state representative for Oklahoma House District 88, a very diverse metro district north of downtown Oklahoma City. She is a lifelong Oklahoman and grew up in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Mari graduated from Ardmore High School and attended Oklahoma State University. She is a criminal justice reform activist and community organizer. Her life's work is geared towards fighting for and maintaining the civil rights and liberties for all who enter America. She grew up believing in the power and the duty she had to change the world for the better. Mari believes that House District 88 deserves the type of representation that doesn't exploit the identities of its constituencies, but rather helps equip its constituencies with the necessary platforms to fight and be heard. When she announced her intentions to run for the House District 88 seat, Mari explained her decision as follows. It has never been a more important time for the next generation to see themselves in our government. It has never been a more important time for those closest to our state's problems to be structuring the solutions. I am running to fight for criminal justice reform, health care access, and public education, not just in an election year but every day. Here, here, let's get busy and assist Mari in her quest to represent House District 88. Follow her on social media, share her campaign post, sign up for contactless campaign activities, write postcards, make phone calls, donate, donate, donate. No amount is too small. A donation to cover a box of face masks would be a great help. We sincerely hope that you have enjoyed today's program. We're still open to add more very important Democratic women who would like to present their centennial crush or suffragist shero. You must be a member of an OFDWC club, an Oklahoma elected official, or Democratic candidate, or 
a member of the Oklahoma Democratic Party leadership. That's all of Oklahoma Democratic women, right? If not, it should be. Ask me how to, you too can become an F OFDWC member. We would love to have you. Remember, we are indeed stronger together. We must do all we can to support our Democratic candidates. Contactless literature drops. I can't say this more enough. Postcard writing, phone calls, and donations, donations, donations. To protect the health of voters and campaign volunteers, candidates must be innovative, and innovation costs money. We must win big on November 3rd, 2020. Thank you, and be very, very safe.